Hello, we just want to welcome everyone out to the Jackson Auto Swap Meet show here in Jackson, Michigan at our new location. It's been a good show today, as you can see, and uh, we look forward to doing it back in January of next year. Uh, you can find out when our show is and follow us on our Facebook page under the Jackson Auto Swap Meet show or on our website at midmichigansupershows.com. Dan, uh, what brought you out here today? Oh, my brother's got some stuff set out on a couple tables and uh, just some parts that we've had from our racing gig. And then um, other than that, just uh, really talked to a lot of the old racers and some of the old car guys that I know. So have you been into cars most of your life? All my life. Yeah? Yep. And what, what, what got you into cars? My father. Yeah? Yep. He was very well known, um, street rider, drag racer. Even a little dabbed into the stock car business a little bit okay. back in the day. All right. And so, what was his name? Ted Manor. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that yeah. name. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now, I heard recently you won, you won something big this year. Yeah. Uh, I drag race. I got a 48 English Ford, and I won the championship for the Nostalgia Outlaw Comp car Class. Wow. And uh, I did very well. I, I won, I don't know, four or five races this last past season. And uh, yeah, it was it was exciting. It, we we had a lot of good times, traveled a lot of times, you know, just. And and so that's like a points. You race and you you get yeah, points it's a point to win series. It. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. And uh, is there a lot of preparation for that that you have to do each week? Yeah. 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 It's it's. As I get older, it's more work than it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> as, but it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it. Um, I grew up around the racing, and uh, yeah, it's just a blast. So, what kind of uh, hot rods and cars do you have? Well, I have a front engine dragster with a blowing big block really? alcohol motor in it, wow. and then I got the '48 English Ford. And uh, my brother's got a front engine dragster, and he runs with the Nostalgia Outlaws also. And uh, the front engine dragster I have, it's new to the to the camp but mm -hmm. uh i don't know i don't know what i'm going to do with it yet it's a very very nice car okay so and is this at Milan dragway us 131 right here in michigan or we, how far well do we travel? run uh well we run ugly michigan lapeer michigan northern michigan Milan, michigan um we have ran out over to onondaga even a couple okay. times right. uh and then we run 131 uh, over there in Martin. Yep. And we run Norwalk, Ohio. And uh, yeah, so we travel. It's a, we put a lot of miles on in the summertime. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand what goes into, you know. Oh no. Just yeah. just getting to the racetrack. Yeah. My dad was um, he was into sand drags, right? And so. I remember all the preparations we had to make to get there and go, yep. and um, it's a lot of work and a lot of effort. People don't realize it's a lot of work, a lot of planning, because you know when we're gone for three, four days, yep. you know it's uh, getting rooms, getting motels, and uh, but it's I'm just getting old now, yeah. so and making sure you have the spare parts. Oh yeah, because yeah, yep. you know something's going to happen. I've been fortunate, but you're right. Mm -hmm. Anything can break, and uh, but I've been pretty fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, I don't put my car on kill because that's when you start hurting things. Right. Mm -hmm. I just make it for it's very consistent and it's fast, but it's not. Uh, it's probably not as fast as it could be. I just. I don't let my wallet overdo my racing gig. You want to make sure you make it to the next round. Yes. Right? Yes. All right. right. Yeah. Is there is there one car that you've always wanted? Yes. What is it? It's a blown, altered nitro. Mm. 
I never could afford one, obviously. Sure. They're expensive, but uh, they're, they're pretty bad. They're bad, and I love them. I've wanted one since I was a kid. Right. And uh, close as I could get to one is I had an altered that was a small block injected on alcohol. Okay. But I had fun with it. I won some races with it. And cool. Yeah. So. It sounds like that would be expensive to operate. Oh, they're right? very, any blowing car is expensive to run. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't know what I'm going to do with this frontage and dragster yet. Mm. <laughs> Will we see it in the spring, you think? Racing? Somewhere? Uh, very possible. Very possible. Um, I lay in bed at nighttime just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I, I don't know. Right. We'll, we'll see. That's all I can say about that. Think spring, right? Yeah. Think well, spring. yeah. Anything's better than this cold. Right. <laughs> well, we'll be looking out for you. We're going to try to make it out to more tracks this year here That'd in be Michigan awesome. and Ohio. Yeah. So. It was great speaking with you. Yes, same here. Good luck. Thank you for having me. Yep, good luck. Thank you. Yep. Hey Milton, what brings well, you out today? Just looking, looking around for parts and looking for visiting with people that I know. It's a good day for that. Yes. Um, what do you look? If specific parts you're looking for? For Mopower parts, just something for 64 Plymouth that, ah. that I I bought to replace my Superbird that burned in a fire a few years ago. Yeah, I was I, just I, looking at these pictures. I'll, we'll show these. We'll figure out a way to get these on screen. Um, you lost some Mopars there in a devastating fire. Tell us about that. Yes, it was August of 2019. Mm -hmm. I just came back from a show in uh, uh, <laughs> over in Wisconsin okay. with my 672 Dodge Charger USAC car. And a couple weeks after I came back, I was working on a street rod, a uh, rampage with a 440 in it, mm -hmm. and spark or something landed and started a fire and burned up all of them cars that I had. Mm. That's a fifth wheel trailer and a camper trailer and go-kart and about $300,000 worth of stuff burned oh up. My. And did insurance help with any of that? The insurance covered all my cars. Okay. The garage got partially covered, and my tools got covered, but still I lost a lot of of collectible stuff that you can't find again. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, us car guys like to stick stuff around in the garage to hang and, yes. and show, right? I had some old templates from NASCAR trucks from when the truck series was new. And oh, okay. Yeah, I had gas cans, NASCAR gas cans from the... Kazalowski race teams, and I had uh, I had just sides of cars, doors, of race cars. A lot of my stuff was race car stuff. Yeah. It, but if, is there anything you could have, after going through that? Is there anything you think you could have done to make it safer, or know where your fire extinguishers are at? Right. And where you're going to do a lot of welding, put a little protection around it. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. It, when I was welding, doing some recent repair on our Maverick, some panels, you know, I always had the fire extinguisher near me because I was always worried about that. Yes. There is a lot of sparks that fly, and you don't see them all when you have a helmet on. Well, and I don't know where they landed because when I left the garage and went to lunch, it was a half an hour before I came back. So it was in that time period sometime when it started. Right. And it, it, couldn't have been going long. If I'd have knew where the fire extinguishers was, I may have been able to knock it down. But right, right. I'm not sure. Yeah. Because that you know that's something that we, you know we should find an inventor, do it ourselves. Is they have these things that you could put like above your stove, and they detect heat, and they instantly like they bust open and put out yes. put out the fire. 
They should make big ones for garages that could be up there, right? That could save a lot of cars. Never thought about that part, yes. But, yeah, because you don't know. Right. That I mean, I left the garage, and it was fine. So, Well, and, mm -hmm. and I'm reading that a lot of garage fires now are started by um, people leaving power tools plugged in all the time, the batteries. You know, charging, oh, yes. and then the battery yes. explodes in the middle of the night or something, and, and it burns down. And if there was some kind of device up there that would sense that, psh, yeah. you know. Yes. I mean, you really can't put sprinklers in there, but you could put something else. I would gladly clean that stuff up. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. It, it, you know, even when you have a fire, and I've been around a car that caught on fire in a garage, put it out with the extinguisher. It was a mess. Yeah. But you still but have your car. You, you still got your stuff. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, I've been around cars where we used the extinguisher, and they make a mess, but yeah, you've got your stuff. It's... So you didn't, how did you get those cars, I mean, to replace all those must have been... The, the Superbird, I couldn't replace. Yeah. I just didn't, I didn't have it insured for what the price, going prices were at that time. I insured it, I drove the car all the time. I, I had it to a lot of places around this area and, and I drove it, so I insured it. Well, if we bang a fender up or something, we can fix it. Right. Never thought about it burning to the ground. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, did you have them insured through Haggerty or one? Through Haggerty. Yeah, yes. that's what I have. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They they paid me what I had it insured for. They paid my for the two race cars what I had it insured for. But the street ride that I was building, I didn't insure it yet because I hadn't got it done. Right. So that was a total, but. The two race, the Superbird was so far gone, I didn't want to touch it. And they estimated it far, far more than I had insured for. So I let it go. Somebody bid on it. They put it up for auction. Somebody bid on it for $25,000 out in New Mexico. I don't know. I seen a picture about six months later where they said they had it all up in primer, but you can look at that picture and it oh it's in here that's the first picture in there oh do you mean from the fire that yeah i don't i i don't know about that <laughs> i don't know about that I, I know that's pretty bad that's pretty bad man i i bet there was some tears that day oh i sat there and watched it and just you the garage door was open and i sat there and watched the wing just melt down and run down <laughs> Yes. And how long did you have that car? I had that car for 30 years. Wow. And then the two race cars, I restored the first one, the blue one, blue and red one. That was that was Bob Brevac's car from Ashland, Wisconsin. Oh, wow. And I restored that in, in uh, 98, 99. And uh, that's when I retired from Chrysler, was in 99. So I was working on that car and restored it. And, Took it around to pitch different shows and mm -hmm. racetracks, and then later on I picked up a bunch of parts, and that and the other car chassis was in amongst that stuff. So I restored that as a Iggy Katona car from Willis. And that was a '69 Charger that he had won championship with. And, wow! And but the two race cars. With no interiors and stuff, it's just sheet metal damage. So yeah. I still got them, and I'm trying to work on one of them now. Oh, okay. But well, I bought a bought a '64 Plymouth Belvedere mm -hmm. with a 426 Hemi in it to replace the Superbird. Nice. And I've been working on it slowly, and been a few shows with it last summer. Hopefully this year, I'll get out more. Yeah. So gotta gotta do stuff. Can't just sit at home. It's right. So, you know, the lesson that people can learn from this is to make sure their classic car is insured for the right, right value, right? Yes, that, and make sure your safety equipment's around. Yes. Stuff happens. That's, I've had a few guys since then. That one guy came up to me and he says, I put all aluminum around in my work area where I weld and cut. He says, lined all my walls. A couple other guys come up and yeah, I put my fire extinguishers where I know where they're at. And so yes, it's it's good. It's good lesson for everybody else. Right. Costly for me, but. Is but, there one car 
that you've always wanted? Uh, just my Superbird. Your Superbird, yeah. I yeah. See when I found that, I, was, I had so much fun with it. It was not all original paint, and it wasn't. It was custom car, and, I, and it was an original Superbird. Right. But it was customized. I was comfortable driving it. It was dependable, and everybody liked it. Except the real purist guys. But, yeah. Well, you know, you get them everywhere. And sure. I got used to them, and they finally give up. And I says, it's going to stay like it is. I don't care what you guys say. Went, went to wing car shows and just shows everywhere. Had a lot of fun with it. Well, I hope there's some way, someday, that you can get another one. Somehow. Well, now I, I'm just going to be happy with my Plymouth. and. Uh, Get, get one of the race cars back together. I, I can't, I used to help out race teams. That's how I got in and collected all the race stuff. Okay. Help all some ARCA race teams. I can't do the stuff I used to do, but I still like to go to the racetrack once in a while with the ARCA guys and help out what I can, mostly pushing the car around now. I. When I started helping, I could carry two tires across the wall. Yeah, what did you do for them? Were you on the, like the pit crew or? Yeah, I was on the pit crew. Yeah. Yeah, I used to take care of the tires and, you know, air them up and make sure they were ready to put on. And I'd carry them across the wall and set them down, grab the old tires and come back. And sure. Then I got demoted down to catch can man for the gas cans and then I, the team I was working for retired, and so I just helped out other teams here and there doing this and that. And helped out the number 48 ARCA team for a while with James Hilton, and but it was it was fun. Yeah, sounds but, exciting actually. But, but now I just can't jump across the wall like that anymore. No. I'll be 80 next month. Wow, so you don't look it. So it's time to just sit and watch and push cards around and give them advice. So, All right. Well, yep. it was great talking to you. Thanks for sharing our story. Hopefully it helps somebody learn a lesson. Yes, I hope it does. Right. I hope it does. I know it has a few already. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the, the story got around quick. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Yep. you Brad right here at the Jackson Sports Complex today. We're having a fun old time. We are selling tons of die cast, collectibles, car parts, you name it, we got a little bit of everything here. Everything from fire trucks to press steel to stuff from the 30s, 40s, 50s, and up. Um, we got quite a good crowd going on. They're selling food, pop, snacks. Um, doing pretty well today, as you can see. They're getting some bear spots on the table. Stuff is flying. All kinds of great items for folks and collectors of all ages. We got stuff as cheap as just a couple dollars and Stuff for the big collectors, 125 for a railroad crossing sign. Nice rear 60s Jeeps are hard to come by. And in two weeks, we'll be having a show at the Jackson Fairgrounds. It'll be a toy show. Go on midmichigansupershows.com. You can look it up, folks. Hi, I'm Robert with Performance Auto Value here in Jackson, Michigan, down at the local swap meet. Very, very nice turnout, very nice show, so everybody should kind of come down here and see what they got. Uh, we're giving door praises away every half hour, and uh, just a really, really nice event. Leo, what brought you out here today? I come down here to sell stuff. Yeah? Old car parts and such. <laughs> and now, from my, I understand you used to put this on. <clears throat> Yeah, the uh, actually it's the Veteran Motor Car Club put a put a uh, <coughs> swap meet on at the Rollatorium down in in Jackson. <coughs> oh, they did it for 57 years or so. <coughs> I had a part of it that I did for well over 50 years. Wow! <coughs> but the the club was putting it on, and I I didn't handle the money. There was always somebody else taking reservations and handling the money. It, it went quite smooth right up until the club got small, the people doing it got fewer, and we finally decided to quit. 
Then they turned the rollatorium into a pickleball court, so we couldn't go back there anyways. So uh, <clears throat> we contacted Jerry Dorr, and <clears throat> he said he'd take a chance on it, and here we are. Yeah, it, look at the traffic coming through here. I'm, it's pretty good traffic, I think. <clears throat> yeah. I think if this group was in the uh, rollatorium, it would really be, it would be quite crowded. Sure, so, sure. Apparently, it's going to work out. I hope it does anyway. Now, we've filmed a couple of your cars and shown them on our YouTube page and our Facebook page. You have a, a Darren. What year is that? 54. 54 Darren. Mm -hmm. And then you have a white car, uh, a really old one. I don't know. 198 what... Jackson. 198 Jackson. Now, that was yeah. made right here in Jackson, yeah. Michigan. The Darren and the Jackson were both made here. here Yo, yeah, Jackson. the Darren, too, right? Yeah. Now, how long have you owned the Jackson? Ooh. 30, 40 years, probably. Yeah. Now, being that that's a 1908, is there a lot of, is it harder to maintain? They're what? Is it harder to maintain? No, they're a pretty simple car. Yeah? I've had to rebuild the engine a couple of times. But, sure. Uh, <clears throat> It's a two-cylinder car, and it runs well. We've driven it several thousand miles on tours. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> We run a tour from <coughs> Dearborn to Lansing and back. We drove that last year on that tour. Wow. <coughs> Awful cold. There's no top windshield or anything. Right, it's a roadster, yeah. really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it was extremely cold. But uh, the car that we had taken up there with the idea of driving it pooped out on us, so we ended up having to drive that one. <clears throat> It'll go <clears throat> close to 40 miles an hour if you're dumb enough to try to drive it that fast. Yeah, yeah, because you still got to <laughs> stop, right? <laughs> yeah. Now the Darren, um, you're you're pretty well known for the Darren, you know, around yeah, town. Probably. There's pictures of that stuff, yeah. and and you're always at the car show, happen to, because it has that door that goes into <laughs> the fender. I mean, that's all everybody wants to see it, right? I've told people there's more miles on the door than there's on the car. Right, right. That's my wife's category. She handles that. <laughs> so what other cars do you have? Oh, you got a T-Bird too, don't you? We have a pink, pink 57 T-Bird. Yeah. We also have a 196 Moline, 198 Buick, 1911 Vili, mm. 1911 Model T, and then some newer stuff. Wow, I'm gonna have to come over to your house and check some of that out. We haven't, uh, I haven't seen all those. No, there's 15 cars there. I think. They're mostly covered up in storage for winter right now. But yeah. During the summer, we get them out. Spring's <laughs> getting closer. Hmm? Spring's getting closer. Yeah. yeah. Is there one car that you've always wanted that you haven't you haven't got yet? Hmm. Not really. No. No. I'm uh, interested in the brass cars. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's one car out there that I've been trying to buy, but they won't sell it to me. <laughs> Not yet. N yeah. Never say never, because, yeah. you know. It's in a museum, so. Oh, is that it? OK. Uh, you kind of play around with that. I send them a letter every once in a while. But what is it? It's a 1907 Gale. Gale? Yeah. Like G-A-I-L? G-A-L-E. OK. Out of Galesburg, Illinois. Oh. What makes that car so rare? Well, I don't know, it just uh, the car as it sets is a totally unrestored, uh, unmolested antique car. That I see. Would need a total restoration. Mm. I figure I'm good for one more if I can find the car. Well, I hope you get it. We'll be yeah, pulling for yeah. you. You never know. I have an ad out here for see if I can find a old car. That, totally unrestored that needs everything. Sure. Which would keep me occupied for at least a couple of years. 
Yeah, it's great. I've restored several cars like that. <clears throat> it keeps me out of mischief. It does. <clears throat> yeah. Keeps you out of keeps you from watching, sitting around just watching TV. Oh, it gives me something to do. Or, you know, it's a project, and rather than sitting there watching the TV and wielding away. Uh, yep. You get up and you want to do something, and that's what keeps you going. I think. For sure. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Leo, for talking to us, yeah. and uh, we wish you luck on finding that next <laughs> restoration. Yeah, probably won't. Don't it's say whatever. Won't. We're All always right. trying anyway. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you.